Hey everybody, so professional liability then, you know, the idea that accountants or auditors might be uh, might be legally liable, might get sued in court. So we have to know when this possibly might happen. Okay, so it might be basically when you don't show uh, due skill and care. That's what we're looking for when you're not showing due skill and care. Um, and so therefore what you must do what you must do is apply IFRSs and ISAs correctly. We must follow ethical standards. And of course, therefore, uh, if we don't, then this is when we become liable. We must follow the engagement terms and the engagement letter terms. Remember, we have a contract, and that contract is basically your engagement letter. So ensure that you follow the engagement letter terms and that you use properly trained staff. Okay, properly trained, properly qualified, properly experienced. Okay, now. When can it be proven then that we are negligent? Well, negligence basically takes on two tests, uh, sorry, three tests, that you have a duty of care. Then it must be proven that you breach that duty, that you break that duty. And then finally, there must be a financial loss suffered by the person who is suing you. But in order to sue you, they must have a duty, or you must have a duty of care to them. Okay, so um, for uh, for an audit client, definitely, we've got a duty of care to them. You know, we put we, we write a report for them. However, for any other third party, such as a single investor, it's more of a question mark whether we actually do owe them a duty of care because our duty of care comes from the engagement letter, doesn't it? Breaching the duty means things like we gave the incorrect opinion. We said it was true and fair and it wasn't. Or it could be that we didn't audit properly, the ISAs not properly followed. That would make sense that we're breaching our duty of care to them. And that the client must have must have made a financial loss. Um and just think what the only thing I say about that, uh, and it's got to be a loss that um, that wouldn't have otherwise have occurred. So it's because of our incorrect audit opinion that the loss occurred. Okay, just specifically because of this. Moving on then to this liability, because obviously you're liable, as we said, if you don't show due skill and care, and that you're negligent, and that to be negligent you have this duty of care. And you can see here I've put audit, client and third party, which comes from this bit, look, from the duty of care. So we've got the audit client and the third party. So uh, duty of care for a client, we said automatic, definitely. For a third party, it needs proving, okay? Breach of duty. would need proving, third party would need proving, and then obviously the loss made, that would need proving if it was an audit client, as it would need proving if it was a third party. So the key is this bit here. For a third party, you need to prove that um, there was a duty of care owed by the auditor to that third party, okay? With a client, it's absolutely automatic. Okay, uh, what we'll go on to in the next session then is how can we strict, restrict our liability? Obviously, we don't want to be, become liable. We want to do everything properly. But if worse comes to the worst, how can we restrict that liability?